baby, and we're back on the Cooligans Living Room FC. And Christian, this is exciting. We got a commission. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> which police department do we have? I know, I know, right? As soon as I heard a commissioner was here, I was like, I didn't do it. You know, the first reaction I had. <laughs> okay, we usually have wardens, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? Did someone pick up that red phone with the one button on it and press it? Are we in trouble? But this is exciting. This is what well, I would be, I would say, one of the one of the busiest people in American soccer. Very. And uh, she's taking the time out of her schedule to be here with us. So clearly, there's a grammat, there's a mistake somewhere. <laughs> there's a, there's something happened. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. The commissioner for the NWSL doing huge things, including being on this show, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> unless you're driving. And if you are, pull over, hit that brake, and put your hands together for the one, the only, Commissioner Lisa Baird, everybody! Lisa Baird, uh, Commish, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Look, it's an exciting week. We're getting back to the pitch this Friday, so it's a big week for us. Yes, I mean, and, and as a reminder, yes, Friday, April 9th, uh, NWSL Challenge Cup returns. Yep. The Houston Dash against the Chicago Red Red Stars. Uh, I, I mean, the, the, we can start there. The Challenge Cup last season was not only incredibly entertaining, it was incredibly successful. Uh, what is the what, what has been the lead up into this season compared to last season where obviously everything was uh, madness and COVID and we didn't yeah. know where we were as a, as a society. But how, what is it like prepping for this 2021 Challenge Cup? Well, it, you know, and it, we're still following medical protocols, so we had to adjust our medical protocols uh, again. And but you know, going through this the second time was a bit easier, and everybody was a bit more um, confident that what we had worked. Since you know, to date we've had zero uh, COVID tests for the last uh, li zero positive tests in our our preseason training. So the women are doing awesome. The players are doing great going into this weekend, um, and I think the exciting thing for all of us is now we're getting into the development of rivalries so the the first game is friday night on um at 7 p.m on cbs sports network and you will be seeing the rematch of last year's championship winners the houston dash against the very very uh excited to get back on the pitch and see if they can claim that that title away from them chicago red stars so it proved i think it's going to have that now wait a minute who's the returning champion and who's the new who's going to unseat it which is always yeah. fun in sports this has to be so exciting for you because you're talking about sort of a a renewed you know uh feeling friend of yourself when you took over correct me if i'm wrong you got the keys to the house, and then two days later, they told you, we got to shut this bad boy down. <laughs> Put the tourniquet. The I'm like, what? What? She what? Was like, I know. And I'm calling, like, every, I'm calling around going, is this usual? What's happening? <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, let's just take a beat here. Let's figure it out. And, like, I kept, I was calling because I've been around in sports, and I've worked at the NFL, and I worked in the Olympic world. So I kept calling people going, hey, what's the game plan for managing live sports in a pandemic? And people were like, no game plan, no playbook. So we had to create our own, which was, it was very hard. It was like really, you know, kind of um, uh, really hard because we worked super, um, uh, super hard with our medical task force to do that. But we also created a new competition that we had to bring in sponsors to um, help us subsidize it and as well as pay the players. So there's a lot of work to do, but uh, we got back to the field last year and we're pretty excited to be um, starting our season um, right now. So yeah, was that, and, was and, that uh, your pitch to get the job when they were like, so you want to be commissioner? What's your plan? You're like, you have a cigar. You're like, how about we shut the whole thing down? <laughs> Let's think outside the box. <laughs> it isn't exactly what I thought, <laughs> but, you know, grace under pressure, channeling my, you know, kind of my best, my best thing going, okay, we got this. And meanwhile, I'm like, going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> okay. But, you know, grace under pressure and all that. And, you know, I was really happy. We have, I think some of the best owners in sports because they really got behind us and um, we did it. We were the first league back last year. And, um, you know, I think... I think we're um, maybe we're first in sports 
uh, first to start or I don't even know for the first sport back in spring. I don't I, know. I, I, I believe it was the no first idea. team sport uh, yeah. last uh, last year to, to come back. And, yeah. and it really did. I, I wanted to I was going to mention that. And I want to applaud you uh, uh, for that, because it was not only a, a obviously uh, an incredible undertaking, but it was a an opportunity for not just for sports to come back, but for women's sports to to take the lead there. So when it comes to um, your being a representative of that, how much does that go into uh, thinking about your job in in representing and growing the women's game uh, across the country? You know what? You know what? It, there is because we truly are an independent women's sports league. Like we're not. We have no formal alliance with any other men's sports league. We are doing it ourselves, and our owners are are fiercely proud of what they've done in the first five near, nine years. We work really collaboratively with our players' association to do things, but it is challenging because we're doing it on our own. Well, I think what happened, and and by the way, it wasn't intentional to be the first league back. Uh, no one was more surprised than me. I woke up. This is a true story. I woke up and we were doing our press announcement on CBS and I turned on the news, you know, just to get ready. I was up early and, you know, kind of blew dry my hair, did all the things you think a commissioner should do. <laughs> and then I got on and there's Gary Bettman. I was like, oh, okay, the NHL is coming back. But he was announcing that they were coming back in August or something like that. So all of a sudden I'm doing the, the, um, the, press interview on CBS and we're like, whoa, we're the first team back. What was so cool about it is that what I found is sports fans were really rooting for us, the league. Like they're definitely rooting for their favorite players, many of whom we have the world's best known players in our leagues, like Julie Ertz and Lindsey Horan and, you know, um, Lynn Williams, world's with Dabinia, Marta. They're rooting for their players. Second, they're definitely rooting for their team. But in this case, we have something very interesting, which is people are really rooting for this league to succeed. And it's a, it's very different to be in that position. Like even, you know, uh, journalists and, and major, pre but they're like, oh my God, they're doing it. And I think there's something about a small league like us really making it. That just is the American spirit, right? It's like, you could do it. You're going to start seeing, uh, you know, kids with Commissioner Baird on their, the back of their jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I'm just happy to see Alexis wearing the windbreaker. You know? <laughs> I forget that Commissioner Baird, he's wearing the windbreaker. It's the right. must have. If we're checking it's windy, which is why it's called yeah. a windbreaker. You grew up in Long Island. I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. You know, windbreaker, that's like, that's a, that's a wedding suit to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. That's right. true Long Island too. <laughs> we have uh, so much more with Commissioner Baird, uh, and we'll be right back after this. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Jillian Sakovitz, and I'm Susanna Collins, and, and we, we got, got gully, gully with, with the, the cool kids. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Cool Against Living Room FC. We are here with NWSL Commissioner Lisa Baird. Absolutely honored. Uh, obviously, the, the Challenge Cup is starting back up again Friday, April 9th, so make sure uh, uh, to tune in. Uh, we have a couple questions from fans, and I wanted to get to this one because this was uh, really uh, a fun one. This is from Emily Gerda. She had asked, she is a, a Portland Thorns fan, and she had asked, when will we see an NWSL All-Star game? <gasps> so, all right, we're ready forward thinking. Thinking, really trying to grow this league is well, uh, we the first to bring this up as an idea <laughs> <laughs> no but it's definitely something we'd love to do i would say that we're working on our multi-year schedule now like you know with us and and you know emily is obviously a fan that knows women's soccer we have to work within the world cup years and the olympic world so it's a little more challenging it's not like the nfl or major league baseball and they're not worried about you know all, all of that but so we're definitely it's definitely hopefully something we can get to too. So I think it'd be super. Who would your all star be? Who would you like? I'd love to ask you guys. Who do you think? Ooh, Ooh. I mean, look, I, I first name comes to mind. Crystal Dunn uh, yeah. has to be on there. OK, that's uh, an easy one. Yeah, it's an easy <laughs> one. I'm going to I'll say probably Shea Groom. I mean, with the challenge cup she had. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Friend of the show. She's been on. Um, <laughs> Actually, you know, let's talk about the challenge cup because yeah. 
you had mentioned that, you know, it was a, a bit of a surprise or, or certainly not a plan that you guys were first. But I think something that certainly was a surprise to us, 500% ratings increase. <laughs> I mean, what what magic? How, how many phone calls were you made? What happened? <laughs> how did you, you get imagine? there? And it, how do you sustain that? Because it's it clearly a lot of people got to see an amazing competition. And I think a lot of people fell in love with NWSL. Yeah. You know what they did? And I think it was the fact that maybe maybe not a, like we definitely have our incredibly avid you know, women's soccer fans, like we have them and they are the most digitally engaged, engaged audience in the world. We love them. But I think the fact that we got on, on a big broadcast network with CBS, and then we did the streaming with Twitch at the same time, just exposed us to so many mainstream soccer fans and then mainstream sports fans. So I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said, oh my God, this is just great soccer. Like that was the reaction to it was, wow. And I think that that unexpectedness. And so what happened is even with the Challenge Cup, we had huge TV ratings for our championship um, game. But then we came back and we did a smaller fall series and we were able to take advantage of it to have six more games on CBS. And that's when like college sports fans found us. Then we started to get people found us on Twitch. So Brazil is a big um, country for us that follows us now on international streaming. And remember, those guys like uh, England, Sweden, we had people tuning in from Korea. And those have to be serious fans of soccer because they're tuning in at three in the morning. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it's not easy <laughs> to be an international soccer fan um, when you're viewing um, American times. So it's like the fact that people now know we're there. I think now they're telling people what great soccer is. And this year with the Olympics happening, I think people are going to watch to see how that team is shaping up, whether it's the U.S. Women's National Team, so many of whom play in our league. Um, or, you know, big people like Rachel Daly, she's going to go play for England. You know, you're going to have Marta and Dabinia go home and pray for Brazil. So I think people are now watch them in the early part of it and see how they're doing. And, and then they'll watch them in the Olympics and then they'll come right back to us. Of course. I, how, do, how do you think the uh, how do you handle uh, whether it's a positive thing or negative thing? Players leaving NWSL and playing in, in other leagues. I know it, it adds this this you know, other uh, cachet of interest of like, oh, look, this player came from NWSL, but is there a, an active competition to keep players nowadays now oh, that yeah. other leagues are being uh, as competitive oh, yeah. and trying to get the players? These coaches, like they are killer competitive. <laughs> like they want them. And by the way, to everybody playing internationally at Man City or Chelsea or whatever, come back, come back. We want you. <laughs> if you're listening, we want you to come back. But these coaches, they are, you know, they're, you know, they definitely want them back. And it's the, you know, as you look at the coaching plans and I'm getting to know them, you know, it's long term. They're working to increase what they're doing as teams and they have long term. So they're definitely talking to them, I know, but we're also really blessed in America to have an incredibly strong collegiate system. So there's always another class that is entering our league. So we have some really exciting new players that are going to hit the pitch for the first time. So look for the rookie class this year. I think it's pretty exciting. We saw that in our draft, which had incredible take up. People were really following what was going on in our draft. Um, and they're all like, you know, we're all going to see what Louisville's doing with their expansion team and Kansas City is new news. Um, you know, so it promises to be a very, very competitive season, even if, you know, we have some of our players who are going to play in the Olympics and then coming back or even some of the players not here. So look for that next generation of players. Let me, let me ask you about what it's like for where, where, I guess, where you place your focus, right? I mean, we've seen an incredible uptick in the amount of sponsors and partners that you guys have been able to sign but when you look at the league, I think the NWSL is magically like there's some type of magic there because each player is almost their own brand yeah. on social media. How do you leverage all of that? How do you place a focus? It's different than every other league you might have worked in or really every other league. Certainly when you look at the men's leagues, how do, how do you sort of turn that into a success for NWSL? Well, I think it's about creating overall the positive platform and the stories and then letting the players shine. I mean, we have global superstars 
in our playing in our leagues, right? We we do. So for us, it's the overall platform. So get every game either streaming on Twitch or on TV so that you can see the players. Make sure that we're pushing the stories in the press and getting it out there about the NWSL so you tune in and create more fans. So it's really simple, which is we want that demand curve for the league to continue to go up and up and up. And all, I don't want to say all we have to do, but we just have to make sure that the players have a chance to develop their own their own fan base. But the way that they're going to do it is by people seeing the games, seeing the competitiveness in our leagues, seeing new stories develop like rookies, um, making sure that people are engaging us with league events, whether it's an all-star game, if that gets on the docket or the draft. So it's always creating that momentum and that buzz. And then when you can turbocharge it, like we did last year within getting Angel City in, that's a, like even more excitement and news because now there's going to be, you know, teams in California that are going to vie for the best of the best players. So it's an exciting time. And I think it, you know, I, you know, not to toot our own horn, but we get to help contribute in telling those stories yeah. as well. We've had so many NWSL players. We, you know, Trinity Raman was just on recently, oh. and and you yeah. get to uh, uh, see, you know, I, I, we always say this that that the, the 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 female soccer player doesn't really get to be on ESPN every day and get to tell their story, and it, it just normalizes seeing uh, female athletes on TV. And even uh, another thing I'd like to add is like a couple years ago we did an event um and megan rapino was there and we interviewed her on stage with uh i mean there must have been four thousand people there and the level of i've never been around the more famous person right yeah. where people came little girls came up to I me can and hear said you, christian yeah. i mean right here. <laughs> well, little girls came up to me and they were like hey can i have this picture that i drew of megan rapino can you give this to her and i'm like i don't even think she'll accept anything i give her <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i had to break this little girl's heart but yeah, like alexis said like sort of leveraging that that popularity it, but it's also something even bigger where they, uh, you know megan rapino is an example and there's plenty of other players but when it comes to uh race issues and, and political issues lgbt issues yeah. uh the nwsl athletes are on the forefront of of, of challenging uh, a lot of these things and how do you work with uh those players do you even have the conversation with them at all or are you, are you saying you know be yourselves well, it's like a combination of, of both. And I think that it goes to the fact that, look, our players are not one thing, right? They're, they're very diverse. They're from other countries. They're, you know, grew up in the American soccer system. They came from, you know, development leagues, to, you know, country, developing countries. Like, uh, so I think it's the, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, some of our most famous players are from Japan. So the point is to have a really good relationship with the players where their voice can find a platform in our league, but also keeping it diverse enough, right? Don't, we're not going to be defined by any one issue or any one voice. We're going to be a big mainstream sport. That's our goal. I don't want to be a niche sport. I want to be a big mainstream sport just in, and that's our that's our aspirational vision. So it's definitely giving them a platform as we did last summer in the tragic events with George Floyd, we, we gave them their voice. They decided to make a show of unity in support of social justice. But then in the fall, one of the things they did, which I think was wonderful, is they, they stood up for small businesses in their communities because they were hurting so badly. They were the ones, you know, minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses. The pandemic really had hurt those businesses, and they all played for a team. So I think you'll see us continue to be nimble, and we want to have societal impact. Um, and the way we're going to do it is to make sure that we have that open dialogue with our, with our players. That's great. In fact, we got more when we get back right after this. Hi, I'm Trinity Rodman, and I just kicked it with the Cooligans. All right, we're back on the Cooligans Living Room of C, and we are here with NWSL Commissioner Lisa Baird. 
Um, and uh, Kamish, we have our I can call you Kamish, right? Yeah, right yeah. Here? Great. Uh, we have our own supporters group. They're called Gully Squad, and we like we give them an opportunity to ask our guests awesome. questions. And D- uh, Douglas Reyes Cerrone, who is a Washington Spirit fan, um, has an absolute uh, wonderful question. Uh, he wants to know what is your strategy for getting the league sponsors on board, such as Nationwide, recently, despite COVID impact on the country's economic economically at all levels, and are is there any hope? or a push for NWSL representation in the FIFA video game? Well, um, so yes, the answer is, of course, we'd love to be in the FIFA game. It reaches like the world's like largest sports f- sports f- sports fan yeah. base, which is global soccer. So we've had some conversations with EA. They have a long development cycle. And, you know, I'm going to continue to have them. The Electronic Arts is kind of like a huge influencer in sports. So that would be a really cool way to engage with a whole new set of global fans. Um, but there's also ways that we can do it even more quickly, like just through our growing engagement on Instagram and Facebook. Like that's not something the league has done a lot of before. So we have this incredible savant of a social media manager. His name is Ruben Dominguez. He's amazing. And what he's already done so far to bring our social media like to a better place is is really exciting. So we're trying to engage with our fans one-on-one. That's a way to start. But eventually, yeah, we'd like to be in gaming and all court, maybe even esports. Who knows? The sky's the limit for us. Okay. Uh, we had another question from uh, from Dennis Higgins. He uh, uh, he asked, uh, "What's the word on the women's uh, world club World Cup uh, that people are talking about? Is this a, a, a thing that is uh, closer than we think, or, or or you know, what are the talks about those about that?" Yeah, there have been some uh, press articles from FIFA and CONCACAF that they aspire to have a club uh, World Cup. It's going to take a lot of work with the leagues around the world to make sure we can fit it in with our schedules, with the current FIFA windows, everything we have. I think you guys know this. The soccer schedule is jam packed. Yeah. <laughs> it is like uh you know the subway uh, the the subway shuttle on 42nd Street. It's full yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I think it and you know not to underestimate it but all the leagues cooperating. So would it be interesting? Yeah. And in the meantime, you know, we'll continue to run our league and and hopefully we can continue to attract new fans and and bring in expansion markets and continue to be that club that everybody in the world is rooting for. Um, Justin Freeberg wants to know, what do you think the biggest difference is between the NWSL and women's soccer leagues of the past? And he also wants to know that he's super excited for the direction the league and women's game is getting this country is growing is going. So uh, what are your thoughts on that and the difference? Because this does feel different. You know what I think it is? And I think, um, you know, a couple things from the I think the point of our ownership and our what we want to do is we want to have sustainable growth. Like you can't just grow and then not create um, the kind of right economics to keep the league afloat. So we're having what I call measured growth. I don't think you'll see us going, um, you know, absolutely crazy on anything. We've got to have sustainable growth. But I think what makes it real for us or I can't tell you how important it is to league success to have um you know, broadcast deals with, you know, look how huge Twitch is, CBS, the way that we're streaming all our games, like that gives us the platform that will grow. And then it's really important that we bring in nationally recognized sponsors the way we're doing with Procter & Gamble, Budweiser, Nike, Verizon, Nationwide. These are um, Ally Bank most recently. These are nationally, you know, top Fortune 500 companies. And they understand they have huge sports sponsorships portfolio, and they see us as hopefully a long-term bet. So some of the deals we're doing are two to three years, and that's what's going to continue to give us the resources to really be able to invest in the league, which is what we want to do. And, and you mentioned uh, Nike. I mean, that obviously makes all the kits for, for uh, yeah. all the NWSL clubs. How is it that Nike are consistently crushing it every single time when I they know. release kit, NWSL kits are arguably uh, some of the definitely some of the best in the world comparatively to even uh, the men's leagues. So how is it that they're constant? They can do that so regularly. Are are is it a bit competitive with like Nike and then MLS is Adidas deal where you're like, all right, well I don't yeah. know, that's your problem. You make yeah, your white MLS. MLS and Adidas, that's their problem. You know what? I think it's because 
they the Nike designers really capture the spirit that's in each of the brands right the Portland thorns like they kill it constantly but look at their brand like the symbol of the thorn but even like the newest one with racing Louisville like oh my god that lavender color it's just to die for and like we're we're women we love a pretty brand like we want (laughs) we want it all we want competitive intensity and we want gorgeous kits at the same time and who else can do that like we can be gorgeous like who else is going to wear lavender (laughs) but racing Louisville I love love that I've never heard a a kit described as to die for but I can get used to it yeah And look Only at, like, like if an you look angry at her... shaved head dude in England holding a knife. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, look at Orlando's. Their kits went to the moon. They've got gorgeous. stars on them. They're gorgeous. Drop dead yeah. gorgeous. Okay. So pretty excited. <laughs> All right. These are superl- superlatives I can get behind. This is great. Okay. Uh, all right. We have more with Commissioner Lisa Bear. So come right back. All right, we did it again. Thank you so much, Commissioner Lisa Baird of the NWSL. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been an absolute honor. Incredible. You've added a, a, an, an, an immense level of credibility to our show. Yeah. It is <laughs> quite, quite incredible. Uh, but Commissioner, is there anything you want to let people know about before we sign off? Yeah, I really hope you'll be watching us on CBS Sports Network Friday night, April 9th. It's the rematch that you've been waiting for between the Chicago Red Stars and the defending Challenge Cup champions, the Houston and dash so be there okay uh yes we will be tuning in uh as well and we'll we'll probably even do some watch alongs on twitch and things like that it's been uh, a a great we did it for the challenge cup last year it was very very cool uh all right so uh everybody make sure to follow us at soccer cooligans at fubo sports as well and subscribe to the fubo sports youtube channel for full episodes of our program all right uh commissioner let us end the show the way we normally do as is tradition you will be the first commissioner to be doing this This i can't believe (laughs) this is for commissioner lisa bear my name is christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerreros. And together, what are we? The, the-